Well, it's about 10 p.m. in the trading room tonight. I'm just trying to figure out my next steps for tomorrow. I'm trying to figure out what's called my bias, which is a bias is just a probability of one thing happening over another. And I, I try to do that with every trade. I don't just try to randomly follow the market, follow the trends. I, I try to figure out a bias, the best spots to get in, where to get in, where to get out, that sort of thing. Um, I'm looking at the dollar yen and euro yen pairs and taking a look at this trend here. Now I've been trading this over the last few uh, weeks with some success, actually with a lot of success this month. And you can see that the trend has been up on the dollar yen steadily since boy, February, March, and every time they buy the dips and so on. And as it's rising, what happens is the so-called dumb money or the retail traders continue to short things. For some reason, it's, it's built into most of us and we have to sort of beat it out of us if you want to survive in trading. But we tend to short things that go high. We say, oh, it's too high. Or if they go too low, we say, oh, it's just too low. We got to buy that. Going, going against the trend. And that is very, very common in retail traders. They're, they're, the higher this goes, the more they think, oh, this has got to come down at some point, right? Nothing goes up forever. And uh, so that's basically what the, the professional traders call the dumb money because it's, it's wrong. And the dumb money is usually wrong. So for example, if I go and look at this pair here, the dollar yen, right now, 40% are long, 60% are short. Now that's interesting that it's 40% long, 60% short. A couple of weeks ago, it was actually 13% long and 87% short. So it was way lopsided to the short end, right? As this trend continued to peak, it got more and more short and they kept getting burned and burned and burned, but the retail traders don't really learn their lesson. Now you finally get the down move and all of a sudden, they get out. See, that's the two things they do. They're in the wrong direction. And when they're right, they get out really quick. That's how you know a beginning trader. And so they're out of this trade and they're starting to reverse. It's went from 13% long to 40% long. So that's a trade I want to be in, but I want to be in it on the short direction because they're starting to shift. You see that the dumb money is shifting and why not? I've got the trend. I've got, uh, you know, there's there's room to go down more and you had your bottom here. But I, like I said, because I've been looking at all these charts from the Nasdaq to gold to silver, everything, everything is failing that the buy to the dip is not working as it has been in the last few weeks and months. I'll give you an example here on the Nasdaq. Same thing, right? Here's buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, and then boom, below the 20 way below the 20, headed toward the 200. That's the pattern everywhere right now. So I would not be so quick in this instance to buy the dip. I think still think there's room to go down on the NASDAQ. I still think there's room to go down on these dollar yen charts and even the euro yen. Why am I looking at the euro yen? Um, Europe has a lot of data coming out, a lot of CPI data, that is inflation data. And take a look here at their inflation over the years. Uh, actually, over the last, looks like 12 months, started up at 5.3, similar to ours. It's drop, drop, drop. It looks like it was going to head back up and then it went back down. I think it's on its way down to zero. In fact, I think Europe is very, very close to a recession. This is GDP. This is growth. And we are at 0 0.2, 0 0.2. The last one was 0 0.4. I'm expecting it to come down again, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, something like that. So, Putting all that data together, I'm thinking a short of the euro yen. Now, should I wait for earnings or put some in now and some after? Or um, not earnings, but these reports, which come out just in a few hours from now. I'm probably going to front run it and take some take my chances a bit and short the euro yen at this point. And if I need to get out, I'll get out. But that's where I'm at. It's also a risk off trade in the fact that if, if you're thinking the NASDAQ's going to go down, this usually goes in the same direction. And so I like that factor as well. I did mention that we have a ton of earnings tomorrow, right? Starting with Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, Merck, AMD. These are big earnings, chip earnings. And I'm leaning toward the downside on some of these. I think we've got ahead of ourselves a little bit on the AI 
some of these stocks went up on AI and they're not even AI stocks. Now, some stocks are good. They have things like the cloud, which is growing like Microsoft. But if they miss, um, that will tank everything. And then that will tank my Euro Yen trade um, in, in a good way as well, because I plan to short it. So that's what I'm thinking, right? That's my bias. Now, am I right a lot on these biases? Well, a fair amount, but you know, 60, 60% 60 is a really good rate to be right. Um, maybe 65%, we'll see, but there's a really good chance I could be wrong. And if so, I have to get out really quick. That's the plan. All right, so for right now, I'm gonna do a little mini short on the NASDAQ, just sell one futures contract. And that's in preparation for my bias on earnings not going the way a lot of people think. I also sold short a little bit of silver. Now, why would I do that? I just made a video saying that I'm long silver and I am. But technically, uh, let me show you a silver chart. So this is what it looks like. It is down just like all the other charts down below the 20. And again, this, this thing is going down further than people thought it would, just like the dollar yen, just like the NASDAQ. It's the same pattern across the board. So even though I like silver, I'm going to put a paper short on it. And with those winnings, I will buy, assuming there are winnings, I will buy uh, some more long-term silver in my value account, you see? So I'm just trying to trade. I'm not married to any one position. I'm just, uh, uh, I'm not married to silver or gold. I do like it for the long term. I like holding it. I even like holding some physical. But um, when I trade, I trade just on the facts and just on what the trends are telling me to do and what the facts are telling me to do at that moment. Tomorrow could be completely different. But I think we're headed toward this uh, this 200 day moving average. I don't know if we'll hit it, but we seem to be heading toward that. And that generally means the dollar is also moving up. And that's why I chose to short the Euro yen rather than the dollar yen, because I think there's some currents taking the dollar up at this particular time. Now, it's funny when I when I say things like that or, or do things like shorting silver, it tends to upset people. Um, <clears throat> and that's because a lot of people are married to their trades. They're very emotional about whatever they're holding. Um, it may be Bitcoin. A lot of people are emotional about silver and gold. Um, or a lot of people have bought into the idea that the dollar is going to go to zero, you know, over the next couple of years with, with bricks or whatever. And I respect the ideas. I just don't believe in getting married to a trade, especially if you're a short term trader like myself. I just go where the trends take me, where the data takes me in the next you know, few hours. That's really all I'm looking for. I'm not trying to predict things way out into the future. I'm just trying to predict the next few hours. And uh, that's really, if I can describe my job, that's what it is. Anyway, for you short-term traders or you swing traders, keep your eye on AMD tomorrow. That is going to determine the direction of the, the NASDAQ and the markets in general. I think if if this AI is real, and I mean not real in terms of what it's actually doing, I know it's real, but in terms of the sales that people are expecting, we'll see it. They've got this uh, M1 300X chip, I believe it's called, and we'll see how well that's sold. Are people buying it? Are people trying to expand their AI capabilities right now, or is this still just early in the game? Because the market has really gotten ahead of it. So we'll see if it's uh, we'll see if it's real or not. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on AMD and also Microsoft because they are in the cloud, right? They sell a lot of uh, as well as Amazon. They sell the cloud to businesses out there. Our business is still growing and needing more space out there, probably, probably. So those are the two questions I would like to see answered, and they will guide my bias for my swing trades and my longer term trades for the next six or so months. Really interesting. Notice that AMD is also following that same pattern. Well below the 20. And in this case, it's actually below the 200. So very interesting to go bear market. Bear market is below the 200. Very interesting to go bear market right before earnings. And the expectation, it'll be, looks like after market uh, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So going to be a very interesting day. Don't get married to any trades. If you think things are going to be great in the AI field, look at the numbers. Don't just blindly go. If, if things change, don't be afraid to change your mind. 
about anything, about silver, about Bitcoin, about AMD. Anyway, that's uh, my thoughts for tonight.